Point the Hoc is the scene of one of the most heroic operations on D-Day, flanked by Utah and Omaha, both within range of the huge coastal guns that were photographed by Allied aerial reconnaissance. It's like a time capsule of the day when the world held its breath as the Allied forces attempted to gain a foothold on Hitler's fortress Europe, the day when Normandy became a portal of freedom for Europe. Of all the stories told about D-Day, this is undoubtedly one of the most tragic. This rugged peninsula in France is one of the most infamous of all the D-Day battle sites in Normandy. Equidistant between Utah and Omaha, the two landing beaches allocated to the American forces. The assault onto Omaha Beach was a bloodbath, but at Utah, the casualty numbers were much lower. Having said that, many of the troops died in the rehearsal that took place in the southwest of England at a seaside town called Slapton Sands. A series of blunders resulted in an ambush by German e-boats and the death of 750 men, four times the number that were killed on Utah Beach during the actual operation that they were practicing for. A total collapse in the chain of command and confusion everywhere with allied ships of different sizes bumping into each other out at sea as total panic took hold. Because of the imminent invasion of Normandy, the catastrophe was immediately hushed up. Everyone was sworn to secrecy, from the military top brass to the civilians living in nearby towns. Even hospital staff were forbidden to ask any questions of the wounded. And then the whole tragedy took on a sinister twist, as it became clear that 10 officers were missing, all of whom had the highest level of security clearance and inside knowledge of the D-Day plan. The invasion could have been compromised if even one of those men had been captured and interrogated. Top level meetings took place for 24 hours between military and political leaders and then everything changed when the remains of all 10 were found floating in the sea. After the war, no attempt was made to honour the men who died on that picture postcard beach in the summer of 1944. The casualties of war are not just those who die on the front line of battle, but the victims of mistakes and misjudgments. And then in 1984, a local man saw the turret of a Sherman tank out at sea in low tide. With the help of volunteers in the local community, the tank was pulled to shore and restored. It now has pride of place on the beach at Slapton Sands. It was said that there was more interest in the local community to honour those men than the British and the American governments combined. A disaster precipitated by flawed intelligence. And that's where we pick up the story here at Point the Hoc. Unlike so many of the other famous battle sites throughout the world, this place has been left virtually untouched. It's like a time capsule of the day when the world held its breath as the Allied forces attempted to gain a foothold on Hitler's fortress Europe, the day when Normandy became a portal of freedom for Europe. In the hours before the landings on those five beaches, when peace was suddenly overrun by war, a colossal bombardment was unleashed from out at sea that turned this place into something that looks more like the surface of the moon than a coastal beauty spot. Not much in the way of health and safety here either. Point the Hoc is the scene of one of the most heroic operations on D-Day, flanked by Utah and Omaha, both within range of the huge coastal guns that were photographed by Allied aerial reconnaissance. 70,000 men were one hour from coming ashore and the guns had to be put out of action. The deadly operation fell to the US 5th and 2nd Ranger Battalions. 
It necessitated scaling the 100 foot cliff with rocket propelled ropes and grappling hooks that were launched from 10 British landing craft that were busy trying to navigate the submerged rocks at the base of the cliff. By the time the ropes were fired out of the assault boats at 7am on D-Day, 50 of the rangers had already drowned. 50 more then succumbed to sniper fire or fell to their deaths. On reaching this point, the US rangers uncovered a catastrophic flaw in the intelligence. The guns were no longer here. The training, the risk and ultimately the sacrifice were all for nothing. Over a hundred elite troops at the very top of their game were lost. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For more links to videos in this series, see the comments and the description below. And if you want to hear more from me, you know what to do. See you next time.